Hey, good morning, everybody. In 2 Samuel 9, we read of David's kindness towards Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. This story is amazing for several reasons. Certainly, it testifies to David's character, that, that he remained faithful to his promises or to the promises that he had made to his friend Jonathan. Um, and in doing so, he acted with great kindness towards this young man. Uh, but this morning, I just want to step back a little bit. See, in our reading yesterday, we saw that David had inquired about building a temple or a house for God. God ultimately rejected his plan and instead had made a covenant with David and promised to establish his throne and kingdom and house forever. This promise, of course, looked ahead to Jesus, the eternal king, who will rule on David's throne forever. Uh, but for today, notice that David's house and everything that he had came from God. And David acknowledged this at the end of chapter 7 when he says, Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. So, fast forward then to today's reading, wherein David blesses Mephibosheth. Do you see the connection? God blesses David so that he in turn can bless others. David recognizes that everything that he has comes from God, so he, in this case, doesn't hoard it, rather he extends that blessing to those around him. Look, we've said this before and we will say it again, David is not perfect, but in this case he does picture for us what it looks like to receive from God and then to share the blessing. This concept, of course, extends just beyond, or beyond just material things. Consider the idea of forgiveness. All of us have rebelled against God and defied His commands. Yet God, in His divine mercy, forgives those who repent based on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the forgiveness that we receive is not meant to be a dead-end street. Consider what Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32 says. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. See, we're not called to forgive others because they deserve it, or, or because we're just expected to bear the burden of their sin all by ourselves. Rather, we're called to forgive others because we ourselves have received mercy. Elsewhere, the Bible tells us to forgive others, trusting that God, who is the ultimate judge, will dispense wise judgment at the appropriate time. Uh, these, of course, are just two examples of how we are called to pass on what God has given to us. Now, there's many more things that we could add to this list. Uh, one more quick thought. Just like in the story of David and Goliath, uh, we are, I, I think, uh, quick to identify ourselves with the hero, in this case, David. The reality, however, is that in a spiritual sense, we are much more like Mephibosheth. See, apart from God, all of us are weak and helpless and unable to save ourselves. It is only the love and grace of God that transforms us and gives us a hope and a future. In this sense, David shows us or gives us a glimpse of God's character. For it is God who searches us out, as undeserving as we may be, and just showers us with boundless blessings. May all of us be ever more aware of God's presence and blessing in our lives, and may we pass it on. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day.